Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot and today we're going to talk about some deep sleeper running backs that you guys want to be targeting in your fantasy football drafts and just might take you to the fantasy football championship. Now this is the third video in our series where we're posting an NFL or fantasy football video every single day up leading up into the NFL season. Our first one we talked about 10 future bets that you guys should consider placing. That gives you some good ideas on how I feel about a lot of teams and players. Second video we talked about yesterday, five breakout fantasy football stars that you guys want to target early on in your drafts you can go check those out they'll both be linked in the description down below and on our channel and just make sure you're and if you haven't subscribed to the channel why not it's free we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the beginning of the nfl season it's a big ask but i need you guys to click that subscribe button we really appreciate it but let's get into my first player he goes by the quad father the quadzilla maybe i don't really know aj Dillon, currently ranked on espn as the 40th best running back in the in the in your fantasy football drafts and ADP or average draft position, he's around around a pick 100. Now he's a tank. You can look at these pictures. You can see why he's called the Quad Father, Quadzilla, standing at six feet tall, 250 pounds almost. Dylan in his rookie year was a borderline non-factor, and that was large in part due to him being hidden on the depth chart. He was behind Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Now Aaron Jones still a Green Bay Packer, but and he will find himself as the ninth best ranked or ninth highest ranked running back in fantasy football. Now he's still in Green Bay, but Jamal Williams in his anime watching self, which he loves, he said he loves to watch anime. I respect it. He's moved on to the Detroit Lions where he is the second running back on a depth chart behind Jamal, behind uh, DeAndre Swift, which we will talk about later on in the video. Now you'll see AJ Dillon, He's going to come up in my videos, not only today, but for the rest of really the next month or so, because I really do think he's a good, he's a good handcuff and one of the best backup running backs in the NFL. Now I could see him very similar role to him in like Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Now I think AJ Dillon is going under the radar and he's, he's very talented. Now, why is he so low? Well, it's because he didn't have, he didn't get on the field a lot during his rookie year. I mean, you look, he's ranked the 40th best running back, but I anticipate that will continue to climb up as he continues to carve out a bigger role in the preseason. But look at AJ Dillon. In his rookie year, he ran for 242 yards, two touchdowns on just 46 carries, a whopping 5.3 yards per carry, one of the highest in the NFL. Now, the only negative was the carries. Like we just talked about, Aaron Jones, he saw 201 carries. He saw about 240 the year before. And then the backup before AJ Dillon, was Jamal Williams, who saw another 119 carries. Now, in the one regular season game where they actually just let A.J. Dillon go loose, I believe Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones were both out. A.J. Dillon ran wild. He had 124 yards, 21 carries, two touchdowns, and that was just on 58% of the snaps. Now, I don't think he'll ever be one of those third down, like traditional every down back, like a Christian McCaffrey, Zeke Elliott, Saquon Barkley, but I think his opportunities will continue to increase as he carves out a bigger and bigger role in this offense. And you wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if by the end of the year, you know, A.J. Dillon's getting 10 to 15 touches a game. That would not surprise me at all. And God forbid Aaron Jones does go down with an injury. I think A.J. Dillon will be the best running back handcuff in the National Football League. I don't think there, you could talk about some other ones, whether you want to talk Alexander Madison or who knows uh, those other backup running backs. I think AJ Dillon is right at the cream of the crop. I think he's all the way to that top. So if you have Aaron Jones, you better make sure you handcuff and get AJ Dillon because I think AJ Dillon's going to have a big, big, big year. So make sure you get him on your teams and you don't really have to waste that big of a draft pick on him. But God forbid Aaron Jones goes down. This guy is a league winner. He will be a top eight running back if Aaron Jones ever goes down throughout the year. You can lock that in. Moving on to my second one. Might be a little biased because he is a New York Jet. He is a rookie. Michael Carter, currently the 37th highest ranked running back on ESPN for fantasy football. Average draft position, ADP, 85. Now, like I said, am I biased? Yeah, probably. But why is he so low? And you think about it, and it's because one, he's a fourth round draft pick and a rookie. And two, he's the New York Jet, which I normally don't like to say, you know, draft New York Jets, but here's here's a couple good things about him. Now, you talk about it, there's a lot of moving pieces in this Jets offense. Now only do they have a new court, a new, a new home under no new management with Robert Sala from the San Francisco's 49ers. Now, though he's a defensive-minded coach, they're still bringing a lot of those tendencies from the 49ers. And they got a that means they got a ton of running backs. If you don't know, you know. Now they they got Tevin Coleman, who they brought over, who's always injured. Now you got Ty Johnson, a guy that really came on late for the New York Jets towards the end of the year. And then you got LaMichael P. Ryan, who currently is on fourth on the depth chart, but he's the second year guy out of Florida. And really, it's going to be hard to shake out. I mean, you don't know. I mean, the, obviously, the, the Jets do like Michael Carter. They wouldn't have spent a fourth round draft pick on him. And he was absolutely dynamic in his, in his four years at North Carolina, especially in his senior year when he went for 1,200 yards, averaged eight yards per carry. Him and Javante Williams were the best one-two back 
fandom in the country. There's no way around that. They were awesome. And now I'd love for him to be the Jets running back one straight out of the gates. I'd be like, all right, if he's the number, if, if you could guarantee that, uh, that Michael Carter would be the running back one for the New York Jets, he would not be ranked number 37. He would be up in the 22 to 25 range, similar to like a Travis Etienne kind of guy. But we don't know where he's gonna be, and that's, I think, the mystery behind him, and I think that's why he's worth this dart throw. Now, could he shake out and not, you know, produce a lot of fantasy points? Absolutely, he, he could not be that great, but if you look at the people around him in this draft range, you got someone like David Johnson, who I really love, but not in fantasy football. He's number 34. You got someone like James Conner, 35, Zach Moss, 36, and Kenyon Drake all at 38. I like this guy, Michael Carter, well over them. He's much more talented, much younger than these guys, and I think he's gonna have a good chance to really produce pretty well with this Jets offense if he gets that opportunity. Now, that is the biggest question. If you, you know, we never know. The Jets buy is in week six. Could they come out of that buy in week seven? Michael Carter be the number one guy and absolutely go wild? Yes, but we don't know what this Jets offense will look like, and that's part of the risk you're taking here, but you're not counting on Michael Carter to be a week one starter. No, you know, you're just gonna expect, you know, maybe he'll sit on that bench, and maybe, just maybe, he'll, he'll turn into something good, and I think that's what exactly he could turn into. So if you have a spot, put Michael Carter on there. Who doesn't like a New York Jet? Eh, I, I don't blame you if you don't. But moving on to my third one, which we were gonna talk about three, and it really was hard to choose. I consider talking about Jamal Williams and a couple other guys, but instead, I'm gonna put up the list from 40 to 50 of all of these running backs in this rankings. Now, number 40, we're gonna go through each of them for about 30 seconds each, and just kind of talk about it, give you my thoughts and opinions. Number 40, JD McKissick of the, of the Washington football team. Now, JD, he had a great year. If you had him in PPR leagues, very good. If you had him in standard leagues last year, eh, you probably didn't get too much for him, but JD McKissick, Ah, man, he had a ton of targets, very efficient, very inefficient with his catches. Just not someone I'm normally targeting. I think Antonio Gibson will play a bigger role in the pass game this year, really limiting that role of J.D. McKissick. Just my overall thoughts, probably going to avoid him most, most drafts. Jamal Williams, I don't mind him. He's the number two on the Lions depth chart. The, the Lions have been very hesitant to commit to DeAndre Swift, which we will talk about in future videos about guys that I'm a little hesitant on early on in the draft. And DeAndre Swift would make that category. Jamal Williams, he's handled, I believe, 100 plus carries in each of his four years of his career. It's been pretty good for the Green Bay Packers. They paid him, I think, a little over three or four million guaranteed money over two years. There's a reason they brought him in. I could see him stealing a lot of work from DeAndre Swift and just being one of those nuisance, that pain in the ass that you're like, damn it, why is he on this Lions team? Would not surprise me one bit. And my number 42, Naheem Himes. Yeah, obviously Naheem Himes, who would either score 21 points or zero points in fantasy football last year. You obviously got Jonathan Taylor. He's gonna be the workhorse back with the Carson Wentz injury. I don't know if I really want to touch many people in this Colts offense besides Jonathan Taylor. Now, Marlon Mack will also be back. He'll be anno another annoying person to deal with if you're a Jonathan Taylor owner. Probably not taking Naheem Himes, regardless of what's going on. Now, Trey Sermon, he was another guy I considered talking about here, but this is just like the Jets running back death chart. It's apt, and it's funny that he is a 49er where Robert Sala came from. That That is a crowded backfield, even worse than the Jets. Like, the Jets have a bunch of, you know, okay guys. You got this this lineup with the San Francisco 49ers. You not only have Raheem Moster, you got Jeff Wilson Jr. And then of course they got Wayne Gallman who they signed in free agency from the New York, New York Giants who looked pretty good last year. So man, I, I like Trey Sermon, very talented. Don't know, he's a great player in dynasty leagues, but don't know if he's a guy that you want to be taking in redraft leagues. Don't mind him though. Out of this list, I'd probably prefer him more than a lot of these guys below him. Devin Singletary, Bills, never heard of running the ball. Not gonna even touch that one. Same with, uh, Zach Moss, we already talked about it earlier. The Buffalo Bills literally don't run the ball ever. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't change. Tariq Cohen coming off a torn ACL. We don't know what his health status will be. Maybe we'll learn more about it in preseason, but still some guy I'm trying to avoid, especially if you're drafting early in these leagues. Gus Edwards, very, his, this is a weird player. He's got, his floor is the same thing as his ceiling. And I don't, I, if you don't know what I know, then if you don't know what I mean, then I go with it. But he averaged five yards a carry last year, but he's not going to be a guy that's going to win you fantasy football weeks. It just won't happen like that. But he might not lose you them if it comes to that. I don't know. Not a guy that I'm really targeting in my drafts, even if, you know, J.K. Dobbins, who we talked about yesterday in five breakout fantasy football stars. I think J.K. Dobbins is on pace for a big, big year. If you want to hear more about that, go check out that video from yesterday. I don't think Gus Edwards is in line for a lot of work this year. Now, Latavius Murray, 
probably arguably of this list the most the most standalone value if you were like i really don't have anyone and i have to play someone on this list in my lineup week one latavius murray would be my bet or gus edwards just because i know he's gonna get some carries just how much you don't know what that that offense would look like without drew Brees. obviously you're gonna either have Jameis winston or Taysom hill something a little sketchy now tony pollard he's just a zeke handcuff he's not gonna get a lot of run unless ezekiel elliott goes down now he was he did produce pretty well with zeke elliott out I believe Zeke Elliott was out towards the end of the year, maybe for one or two weeks. And Tony Pollard had two touchdowns. So he can fill in the role. Just don't expect Zeke Elliott to miss a lot of time. Then you got James White, who, wow, man, that the Patriots backfield just as crowded as any other. Damian Harris, Sony Michelle, both above him. Now, I could I wouldn't be surprised to see Sony Michelle dealt this offseason. Maybe he is by the time you're watching this video. Last one, Philip Lindsay. Someone I really do like on this list. Now, I would not be surprised to see David Johnson moved. Maybe he gets moved to a team like the Rams that's looking for another back. Would not be surprised at that all, at all. So Philip Lindsay could rise up this draft board. He's very talented. What had a thousand yards in each of his first two seasons, I believe. And then last year he was banged up all year, and Melvin Gordon was out there in Denver. Philip Lindsay, a name to watch out for, but I'm not going to talk a lot about him. But those are my two guys that I really like. I really like AJ Dillon. He is my by far my favorite handcuff, favorite deep sleeper running back, AJ Dillon. Second one would be Michael Carter, just for the pure upside might not pan out just like a lot of players don't pan out for the New York Jets but that's just how it is and I appreciate you guys if you want to check out my previous video about five fantasy football breakout stars check it out right there I really appreciate you guys make sure you're subscribed to the channel we got another video coming out tomorrow so stay tuned for that one I'll see you guys again then peace